Thank you. Um, that was a very interesting talk from, from Terence, and I, I think that our banking bailout has certainly uh, created history, a new form of history in, in economic history in terms of bank bailouts. I, I was always a bit puzzled though how, how a good bank, bad bank would, would, would work in relation to a bank that straddles different frontiers, for example, Anglo-Irish Bank. How can you separate assets of Anglo-Irish Bank, banks in the UK, US, or whatever? But I'm, what I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to talk about new forms of banking. And I think one of the things that, that puzzles me is despite three years of crisis and what we would generally regard as non-performing or very poorly performing banking structures, the banking structures still remain the same. They're still in, in, in private hands. And I want to think in particular about the implications of that for, for SMEs. Uh, the proposed solutions to the global banking crisis involved two main elements, reducing government budgetary deficits by cutting expenditure, what Krugman has called the austerity fairy, and solving the banking crisis by recapitalizing the banks, what I call the banking fairy. The argument for reducing government deficits was that economic growth would be enhanced, and we know all of these arguments, by reducing the crowding out of private sector investment, reduce government deficits and borrowing would increase confidence, and hence increase economic growth. Uh, reduced government borrowing would enhance government credit rating and reduce interest rates further, just further uh, enhancing economic growth. It's been, this policy has been recently articulated by Christine Lagarde, who states that Europe must tackle this twin problem of sovereign debt and the need to strengthen capital buffers. And the IMF analysis is one that has wide, attracted widespread support. For example, the chairman of Goldman Sachs International, Peter Sutherland in Ireland, uh, Philip Lane, uh, he also states, a bank recapitalisation initiative is required for major European banks, so not just Irish banks, but generally. And an economic commentator, uh, Rajan, writing in the Financial Times, states that as a first step to solving the Eurozone crisis, Eurozone banks need to be recapitalised. So more recently, the European Commission have proposed strengthening the banking system through recapitalisation as part of a plan to deliver future stability and growth to the European Commission. There's very little uh, or no justification provided for these statements. Uh, for example, uh, could, could bank recapitalize, could banks be their, their, their overall uh, core uh, funding to uh, liabilities, could that be changed by uh, shrinking banks? Uh, why would, why does exactly do we need to recapitalize banks? What's the relationship between recapitalization and growth? So is it possible that if we recapitalize banks and we can recapitalize them from the state, we, we, the state becomes bankrupt. So all the money is in the banks and what are they doing with, the, with the, this, the, these funds? So recapitalizing the banks in particular, particular has not resulted in increased credit for the private sector. So table one shows that credit continues to fall for Irish resident firms. Uh, this is especially so for SMEs. So if you see this, whether you can read those, those numbers or not. But however, in the Eurozone, there has been some credit growth, despite all the recapitalization, all the money is poured at the banks. And we see that the growth in credit in the Eurozone, in, in real terms, is actually quite low indeed, but at least it's positive. But look at the growth in credit for Irish SMEs, and the central bank only produces uh, data for the recent two years, minus 8.3, minus 9.9. So these, there's a huge contraction in, in credit for I Irish SMEs. So uh, this different uh, financial experience may be partly explained by very different financial structures, I would argue. It's, it's, it's one of the reasons why uh, Ireland is very poor lending to the SMEs is because of our financial structure. And the same thing is true of the UK. So that's just a quote from the chief executive and major shareholder in JCB, the earth moving equipment manufacturer. And he's quoted saying, the way to revise, revitalize manufacturing in the UK is to reform the banking sector, create more banks which are focused in particular sectors. He says there are four or five main banks in Britain, while there are a few hundred, including local savings and cooperative banks in Germany, many of which are focused on local and local lending. So large firms are cash rich. So the, the credit crisis affects SMEs in particular. Large international firms have loads of cash. So Apple, for example, is reported holding cash holdings of 76 billion in 2011. Google, 40 billion, uh, and, and various other companies. Siemens recently uh, had headlines in the Financial Times because it transferred 7 billion from a French bank to the ECB because it had a banking license. Moody's shows that, uh, estimates that the US technology sector held 264 billion in cash, pharmaceutical sector 141 billion in cash uh, at the end of 2009. So the, the next figure, I'm not sure if you can see that, it shows the growth in cash balances for major countries. So in the aggregate, 
there's been a growth in cash balances, although we see that the SME sector in, in many countries has suffered enormously. So what's the problem in SME financing? Well, Posen, in the, a member of the, of the European, sorry, the UK Bank of England, argues that for the UK, despite all the recapitalizations of banks, the availability of credit remains especially low, and for new firms. And the reason given for this is as follows, financial intermediaries and markets allocate credit less well under conditions of stress, with a bias against small firms who need to be carefully assessed and against new firms who have no track record. The problem with small firm financing is widely recognised, and the programme for government proposed, proposed but has not yet introduced a partial credit guarantee scheme for small business. Now, if this partial credit guarantee scheme, if it was introduced, and if it is to be successful, it has to be done through a new financial institution. If it's done through existing financial institutions, you just get displacement. They'll just replace the existing loans with new loans. This, this uh, initiative has not taken place because the Department of Finance hate the scheme for some reason. They love the business expansion scheme, which is a tax-based way of financing small business. They hate the credit expansion scheme. I don't know any a loan guarantee scheme, I should say, even though lots of other countries have such a scheme. So uh, a recent trading and development role by UNCTAD makes proposals for regulating and restructuring the financial sector. Two reforms are, are emphasised. The first of these is that public and cooperative banks need to play a more prominent role within the framework of a diversified banking sector, so that the sector caters more to the needs of the real economy in different countries around the world. The second of these is that in order to curb the activities of the global financial casino, there needs to be a clear separation of the commercial and investment banks, we refer to the, the silos, introducing silos amongst banks, and an earlier speaker did that. So of these two proposals, the latter has become widely accepted, but not the former. For example, the Independent Commission on Banking, the Vickers Report, and the UK recommended the ring fencing of certain activities, but the main thrust of the Commission's report is to ensure vigorous competition, which will be improved by the creation of a strong and effective challenger. And this effectively boils down to the divestiture of some of the assets of the Lloyds Banking Group. So I think rather than calling it the Independent Commission on Banking, we more accurately call it the Captive Commission on Banking for the UK. Our new institutions, why are they made more efficient in an economic sense? Alternative banking models such as mutuals and credit unions suffer from fewer agency type problems, for example, conflicts of interest between deposit holders and borrowers and shareholders, profits accrued to members, your remuneration canopy by stock options, reducing the incentive to excessive risk taking, stock market quotation can put excessive emphasis on the short term result compared to the long run, and locally based organisations can suffer less from informational symmetries. However, not-for-profits, as we know in Ireland, and mutuals may also suffer problems. There are governance issues, uh, and, and on an incumbent management may stay entrenched without any accountability. Uh, the regulator of credit unions in Ireland has recently noted the, the problems of credit unions and has proposed capital injection. And we know the capital injection proposed for credit unions is still far less a fraction of what's gone in, into, into the banks. So this just shows you some, some data that I just put out for, for the, the returns on various banks over a three-year period and expressed this as a proportion of their opening capital. So for RBS, we see that they lost over the three-year period 38 billion, uh, so they lost 1.7% of their total capital, not just their, their equity capital. UBS, minus 21, 21 billion Swiss francs, minus 1.06, Lloyds, minus 0.7. And we see the co-op bank in the UK they made profit. For the last three years, they made profit in Rabobank. Now, I could refer to, and I just referred to, this because I referred to earlier, the Landis banks. What about the Landis banks? Why aren't they in there? Four of the five Landis banks in Germany that lost money all had operations in the IFSC. West Deutsche Landis Bank lost the most money through its operation in the IFSC. It was partly a failure of German governments, that's true, but it was a failure of the governance in the Irish subsidiaries, a failure of the Irish regulator. The biggest loss in German banking has been in Depfa Bank. Depfa Bank was taken over by Hypo Bank. Hypo Bank had 120 billion in state aid, 120 billion. The time it went, really went mad was when it was a totally Irish-owned subsidiary, Depfa Bank regulated by the Irish regulator with a very strong and eminent board of directors uh, who, are, who are all Irish. So the problems in German banking stem from the IFSC, not totally, but, but a large measure. So I think we'd have to think, we'd have to look at ourselves when we think there are, of course, corporate governance issues in Germany, no doubt about that. Uh, the cash is in, in France, in, sorry, in Spain, they, they, have, they have another issue. So if we might just conclude. Alternative forms of banking are a necessary part of the financial architecture. Some SMEs in particular are more likely to receive funding from institutions that are not organised in a universal form. It is impossible that a universally organised bank would provide funding to SMEs. This is impossible because they will always have alternative, more profitable activities. 
a bank that needs is going to lend to SMEs or a particular sector, it has to be located uh, and, and set up to serve that, that sector, and that sector only. So the old ICC Bank, the Industrial Credit Corporation Bank in Ireland, was relatively successful. ACC Bank, they are relatively successful. Not because they were state-owned, because they could only lend within those sectors. There are exceptions, of course. Uh, alternative banking models such as credit unions, because they are locally based, with locally based management, may suffer a few informational symmetries. It may also indicate that credit unions have scope for further increasing their operations. But it raises the issue of whether credit unions have the necessary skills to assess loans and how these skills, how they acquire these skills. And that's, that's certainly a challenge if the credit union is to be developed, if mutuals are to be developed in Ireland. Thanks very much.